Good afternoon, Thriving Therapist. How are you guys? It's so great to see you. I am back here every Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific for our weekly Thriving Therapist Facebook Live. And today I wanted to talk a little bit more about how we fill our caseload. So I wanted to make this kind of interactive. So if you're catching it live here with me, feel free to dive in. I wanna hear about your practice. I would love to help you. You can treat this like a Q and A, a live Q and A. Um, but I'm gonna go through a couple things that I usually review with therapists when I'm doing coaching with them. And these things tend to make a big difference when it comes to filling your caseload. So um, yeah, feel free, if you're catching this on the replay, just hit hashtag replay. If you're catching it live, let me know where you're tuning in from. And if you have a full caseload right now, how did you do it? Or if you don't have one, where are you stuck? So the first thing we have to think about is there are way more clients out there than there are therapists that can serve them. There are like thousands and thousands of clients in your area that need help. And there are only a handful of therapists, or maybe there are a lot in, in metropolitan areas, but still there are, there's always a dis, disproportionate ratio of um, more clients need our help than there are therapists to help them. But a lot of therapists are always struggling with, how do I fill my caseload? So we have to first ask, how are your ideal clients finding you? Are they looking for you online or are they asking someone else for a referral to get to you? So there's kind of two tracks for that. So sometimes it's word of mouth, sometimes it's through your referral network, and sometimes it's through your online presence. So if, for example, your client, your ideal client is searching for you online, then you wanna be sure that all of your online information, your website, if you have any kind of like Psychology Today profile or any other kind of platform that you're um, hosting your information on, you wanna be sure that all of your information online is really answering the call of your ideal client. So many times I'm working with therapists and coaching sessions and we take a look at their website and the first thing I notice is the website is talking all about them. So they talk about their ideal um, you know, type of work, they talk about their education, they talk about their background, and they're really focusing on themselves, thinking that that's the best way to sell a client on your services. But actually, it's the reverse. The client already knows when they're coming to your website that you're an expert, right? You've built this website. They know that when they search for a therapist near them, they're somehow landing on your page or your Psychology Today profile. So clearly you've already met the bar of expectations on education training and all of that in order to get in front of them. So what you want to do is answer their call first. So when you take a look at your website or your information that's online, does it really address the questions or pain points that your ideal client has first, or are you focusing on yourself first? So that's kind of step number one. And then step number two is, who's your ideal client and who would your ideal referral source be? So I, like to think about my own examples in this that, that might help you guys understand that. I like to work with depression, anxiety, life transitions, women's health, women's issues, and I tend to get a lot of referrals from OBGYNs. And so it's important that I keep all my information in front of my best referral sources, and that doesn't just mean send them my business cards or write them a cold email. It means I'm developing a relationship with my referral sources so that they'll think of me first, right? So if you think about your referral sources as real people with real lives and real challenges and real work-life balance issues too, then you wanna kinda like appeal to the personal relationship that you're building with your referral sources. So that means that you might follow them on LinkedIn or you might send them an email and then you might send them an article that might be interesting for the kind of work that you're doing or how you can help those clients so that their work would be easier. You're always thinking about the mutual benefit with your referral sources so it's not just about you because too many times I see a lot of therapists who 
decide that they're going to um, try to connect with a referral source. They send them their information and they basically just say, I'm accepting new patients. Well, guess what? A lot of referral sources are super busy and they get a lot of those kind of kind of cold letters or cold emails and they don't really know you. They have no personal connection with you. So if you start to kind of like make some inroads and develop more of a mutual um, benefit with your referral source, so you're thinking of them too, you might then share something that they're sharing or comment on their social media business pages or share their information on LinkedIn or um, recommend them and their services on LinkedIn, for example. So you want to kind of develop more eyes on the information that you're sharing so that they're going to start to remember you, they're going to start to think of you, and they're going to start to want to share your information with their patients. Now, the best thing to do when you start getting referrals from those referral sources is to also be sure that you are thanking them. So I'm a big fan of writing a handwritten thank you note and I stuff more business cards inside the thank you note every time I get a referral from one of my referral sources so that my information stays at the top of their mind. So I would love to hear if your caseload is full, how are you doing it? What do you find that works for you? Where are you struggling? And what is um, the block here? Is it the way that you're presenting your information online to people? Is it your referral network? Is it um, the population? Have you not identified who your niche is yet? Do you establish yourself as an authority and an expert? Do you know how to do that? Because there's a way to do that too. And you want to stay current and relevant and fresh um, with all your information online. So I don't see any comments here right now, although this Facebook Live uh, format is sometimes weird. Sometimes I'll see comments come in after I turn it off. So I want to be sure to give you guys a minute if you do have a comment or question. You also want to be sure that all of your online information has a clear call to action button, that your website is a very clear contact funnel. So I was looking at um, a therapist uh, website recently that I was doing some coaching with, and we got to the bottom of all these beautiful pages that she had, great branding, great information, but there was no call to action. There was no button at the bottom that says, schedule an appointment now, or find out more, or call for a session, or call to schedule. There was no call to action. So many times, um, you know, therapists, we're really spending a lot of time and money invested in our education and training, but we don't think about the business side of doing business as an entrepreneur. And when you think about it, you really have to kind of put yourself into the mindset of a very savvy marketer, a very savvy salesperson, and a person that can manage their books, their finances too. So this is all part of actually what we take a deeper dive look at inside of our membership, um, Elevate, which is all at the top of our Thriving Therapist page. If you want to know more about that, you're welcome to join us in our uh, membership, which is kind of a more advanced level. We take a deeper dive look at all all of these topics and we do it on monthly themes so we kind of focus on one thing at a time but when you think carefully about filling your caseload again be sure that you're establishing your authority and expertise online you want to be sure that your referral network is a mutual benefit to both parties not just you asking for help but you also helping them so how can you do that are you connecting with the right referral source because you have to think very carefully about how your patients or clients would find you and where they would find you. So you really want to be crystal clear on those organizations or those other providers that would be a great referral source for your practice. And you then want to think carefully about your website and your online presence to make sure that you're really answering the call of your ideal client and that you have a clear call to action so that there are no barriers for them to reach you when they want to schedule and get on your caseload. Well, thanks so much for joining me again this week. If you guys have any other comments or questions, I'm happy to answer for you. And I'm back here every Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific for our Thriving Therapist Facebook Live. I'll see you soon. Take good care.